Hello, BookTube. Amazingly, despite the fact that it's a federal holiday, today is a federal holiday here in the United States. It is a three-day weekend. There is no, almost no mail delivery. Despite that fact, I have a box. There was a box on the front porch. But I'm assuming, yeah, this was the United States mail. I, occasionally, I have noticed in the past that I have such a friendly relationship with my mailman. Uh, that, and also with the woman who drives the USPS truck. I have such a friendly relationship with them. I mean, it's well beyond just a familiar face on the route. We've talked about lots and lots of things. I'm just a friendly, outgoing old coot. <laughs> I've noticed that sometimes when they're on their, oh, they're working on these days, they're going to the transit boxes and sorting at the local sorting center and whatnot. I notice sometimes if they're going by, they'll just drop off stuff that I have. And maybe that's what happened here. Uh, but I have a box, and it's from one of you. One of you has broken rule number one and sent me something. Uh, so we'll open that. It's heavily taped, so we'll need we'll need the scissors. <laughs> but but first, I want to give you an update uh, on my new storage clipboard. <laughs> I went through this whole melodrama yesterday. I got one of those storage clipboards that opens from the bottom that you see on construction sites uh, that has multiple shelves inside, lots and lots of deep space for storing stuff. I thought that would be great because I have lots of stuff miscellaneous stuff here in this little work corner. Uh, priority mail labels for sending out packages to Vermont and elsewhere. Uh, an address book. Uh, my little black book of booktubers so that I can send you presents in the mail. Uh, uh, little notes, uh, tip-in stuff from uh, cartoons from the New Yorker or uh, miscellaneous clipped pieces of prose that I don't have a home for that sort of accumulate and I, I don't want I want them to accumulate all in one place uh, and I've had I had a couple of toolboxes but I was just filling with those things and a storage clipboard removes that the necessity for that completely which is great it's absolutely great uh, so I had one of those things the only thing I didn't like about it is the longitudinal aspect you open it from the bottom and often that would cause the contents just spill out on top of me. And I would just put them back to the point where I was I was fiddling with it. Also, the opening clasp was a little bit tricky. And I was fiddling with it, wearying every time. I use it every day. Because I, in addition to storing all those little bits and pieces, I also use it for my journal. I write on uh, the day's journal entry on a loose p page of paper and just date it and put it in a pile. and they get, they get So they, they pile up. Uh, so I've been using it for all of that, and if I'm using something several times every day, I don't want a, that clench of wariness around it. That's the point that I make about your daily use stuff. I try to make that point all the time, whether it's the items, like uh, what you keep your journal in, or what you write on, or how you read, but also your little room. If you have a little room, everybody should, you should make, make an effort to have a little room of your own. A book room, a lined book room, a, a place where you can go and shut the door on the world. Everybody has had a room like that who could. Uh, several writers have immortalized it, and uh, it's really healthy for you uh, to have a room of one's own. Uh, but I made a point about whether or, not, whether or not it's that room itself or any of the impertinence there, too, is that it has to be smooth. You can't be fighting with your stuff. If you fight with your stuff, you're going to get less use out of your time. And I noticed after a while that I was breaking my own rule, and I was fighting with that longitudinal storage clipboard. So I went online and ordered one that opened horizontal, uh, that opened vertically, or that opened horizontally, that opened from the side instead of the bottom. This thing, uh, which happens to come with a handle, uh, and that has extra storage compartments on the side. So this one has a storage compartment for pens and pencils on the bottom, but it also has storage compartments on the side. Uh, for well, this thing has a key. And some uh, some memory cards. I don't quite know what the key is doing there, but that's okay. Uh, th and uh, this is fantastic, <laughs> just incredible. It's I had to I had to sing its praises. This was a wise choice. It's it it solves all of the problems that I wanted solved, and it has a couple of extra solutions. The clip is better, first of all, and it has this thing uh, that allows you to hang this thing up. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, have my surly houseboy install a hook. Uh, right up at arm's length, right here where I sit, that this thing can just hang on. Uh, it, it's just fantastic. Just incredible. It opens It opens on the side of the handle. Uh, it opens very easily, and as you can see, uh, the, the priority mail stickers and all that sort of stuff just stuffs into these containers on the side. In fact, it stuffs into those containers better than it would have 
if those containers had been two elastic bands like I saw online. I'm glad that it isn't that. This works much better. Uh, so I'm, this is, that, that is a problem solved. I will stick with this. I have a, uh, a thin gray document box that I got at a, a local hardware store, and that will be the receptacle for everything that's in here. I'll just use this from now on. So I will put my old square bound art journal, uh, the, the book that I was writing in, I will put that volume in that document box along with all the documents I generate for the rest of this year. I'll pile everything in that box. I'll put 2021 on that box. I'll wrap it with a couple of rubber bands and put it away so that I'll know where I can find 2021 from now on. But, but as far and I'll, I'll get another one of those boxes for 2022, I presume. Uh, but either way, I now know wh how I'll be keeping my journal. This is just, it solves three problems at once. So, <laughs> But then we have uh, the box, and it's pretty heavy. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to try and break into it here. It's got heavy-duty tape all over it. Uh, we'll try to break into it and see what one of you has decided to send me. Uh, I, don't, I don't really advocate this. I mean, it's, considering that it's, that it's us, this is probably going to be a book, or more than one book, and I don't tend to advocate that because uh, it's really tricky to send me a book. It really is. I mean, your heart's in the right place, but... Uh, so let's let's see what we have here. I can defeat this packaging if I can defeat it with as little use of scissors as possible. I try not to use scissors as much as possible, not only because they worry the bean. She doesn't like them. This is how we do our trimming, and she doesn't like that. <laughs> she puts up with it like an angel, but she doesn't like it. And I put them away, baby. <laughs> I put them away. And not only that, but because I have almost no sense of touch, so I don't like handling knives or scissors any longer than I have to. Uh, but let's see let's see what we have here. Oh my, it's a full box. Goodness gracious. With a note. Oh, let's see what the note says. Hmm? Hoping this box finds you safe and healthy. May what's enclosed bring a little laughter and a smile to your face. Happy readings. I tell you. I have said it before, and I will say it again. No offense to any other channel, but I have the best subscribers in the whole world. <laughs> I do. I do. I think we prove that on a daily basis because, and the key, the key element that a lot of other YouTube channels, I might add, should explore is that you're not subscribers, we're all friends, which is terrific. Terrific. <laughs> it is terrific. Occasionally there are wrinkles. <laughs> Someone left a perfectly innocent, sarcastic quip on a recent video of mine, and I flew off the handle. Completely forgetting my whole, my whole we're all friends here thing. I'm, I'm hoping that that person accepted my apology. I, I, if they did, I'll be very happy of it. Uh, but let's see, let's see what we have in here. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, what is this? Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh. Okay, I'm glad I opened this when I showed you my clipboard. Because these are going to go hand in hand. Look at this. Live long and prosper. This is this is in connection or in reference to Book Trek 2021, an ongoing Star Trek booktube event that I'm part of, where we're reading Star Trek novels. I've been ignoring Book Trek for the last few days, in part because I've been a little bit preoccupied with other things, and in part because I've been bombarded for the last five days with uh, shipboard lawyer trivia about the one Star Trek The Next Generation book and episode that I talked about, Encounter at Farpoint, where, well, actually, this was only considered for a few days, or actually, this is the, ex the explanation that comes up for that phenomenon five seasons later, or whatever. I mean, my email has been full of such things, and I love that uh, the earnestness, but it uh, <laughs> nobody wants to be lectured about Star Trek unless it's by me. <laughs> so, but I'm going to be getting back to Book Trek tomorrow. Uh, but that this is not just, uh, this is wood. I don't know if you can tell, but this cover, the back and front cover of this thing are wood. So I have a feeling that this is handmade, which would be incredible. But it's not just the cover, it's that this is a little blank notebook. And I need one of these. The little blank notebook that I have is not only almost completely full, but a little too big for that storage uh, clipboard that I just showed you. This will fit perfectly. So this now becomes that notebook. This is not a little keepsake somebody's sending me that I'm just not going to use. This becomes that little notebook. Fantastic. Fantastic. And because the cover is wood... I can hang a pen on it without worrying about tearing it apart. Great. Fantastic. Also, uh, I can't help but notice these things, the, the rings that make this, uh, can be opened. 
which means that this is infinitely refillable. When I fill these pages, I can just cut pages down to this size, poke holes in them, and fill this again. Fantastic. Incredible. Now, let's see, let's see what the books are. Oh, <laughs> it's vintage Star Trek. We have the fate of the Phoenix in perfect condition. Look at that. Uh, a, a book that I did not talk about on Book Trek. I've tried to stay away from authors I really love or books that I know really well. Oh, we have The Starless World. Gordon Eklund with its original cover. Beautiful. These are just perfect condition. Uh, are that's what they all going to be? Oh, my. Trek to Mad World with this beautiful cover, original artwork cover uh, by Stephen Golden, and this is this is like new. It's like it, it's like it was just came out. I remember eating these things up. This thing came out with this cover uh, in 1979. Incredible, amazing. <laughs> Devil World, another Gordon Eklund. Not a particularly successful Star Trek novel, but I haven't read it in forever. Uh, and this is the this is the original artwork. This is the original cover. Uh, you could tell you can tell a lot of times with these original novels because they will take a chance. There's nothing on this cover that says Star Trek, right? There's no Enterprise. There's no Spock or Kirk or anything like that. They just take a chance on it. Some of them did. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh goodness! All right, this was a classic. Uh, those of us, uh, Mark Richardson is going to be nodding enthusiastically. Those of us who wanted Star Trek. Read this thing back to back a million times. Star Trek lives. It didn't at the time that this book came out, but it does now. <laughs> it's so, so fantastic. Oh, Perry's Planet, Jack Holloman the second. Look at that. This came out in 1980. <laughs> oh, the original James Blish Star Trek. This is Star Trek number one. That's the promotional artwork for the first for the, the first season that they just decided to use on the cover of this book before they started uh, commissioning original artwork. Uh, <laughs> cover for Spock Messiah. Uh, this was one that I did talk about on Book Trek, but only as an ebook. I didn't have it as I haven't had it as a finished copy in forever. Uh, World Without End, Joe Haldeman. Again, a, a little bit of a rarity. Nothing to say Star Trek on the cover. It was, back then you could do it. Now that these are uh, now that Star Trek is, you know, a billion dollar property, you can't do that anymore, but you could once upon a time. <laughs> Planet of Judgment, Joe Haldeman, where we see written Vulcan for the first time. The, the written Vulcan language for the first time. Another beautiful original cover. So I wonder if uh, Star Trek The New Voyages is going to be in here, one and two. Those have a strong place in my heart. <laughs> okay, well, it's also my favorite Star Trek of all. The Price of the Phoenix. <laughs> we will not sell that which makes love possible. Ah, but that is the price of the phoenix. <laughs> terrific, terrific, schlocky novel. I love it so much. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Star Trek Voyages 2. Uh, this was, did we see Star Trek Voy The New Voyages 1? No. It pairs, that, 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 that well, it hasn't come up yet, but these were Sondra Marischek and Mirna Kalbreth, the authors of this book, uh, solicited Star Trek fiction from fans, and a lot of fans wrote into their post office box. A lot. A lot of that fiction was god awful dreck, but quite a bit of it was not. And uh, Sondra Marshak and Mernon Cobra were right on hand to help to polish the ones that needed just that extra boost to get across the finish line. Uh, and some of the stories in here are amazing. Uh, none of them, I would imagine, really high surprise, but amazing. Uh, the uh, there's one in particular that I really loved in here. Uh, it's called the Procrustean Petard. Yes, uh, it's the one in here that's written by Sondra Marischek and Myrna Kalbreth, in which the, the landing crew, Spock, McCoy, Kirk, a few others, uh, find an abandoned piece of technology on an alien planet, and it captures them unexpectedly and puts them through an experiment. The experiment has a different effect on Mr. Spock, but for everybody else, it swaps their genders. Kirk comes out as a, a hazel-haired, pint-sized bomb, bomb, bombshell. And it brings up real questions. It, it's, it's terrific. It's absolutely terrific. The Klingons are in it. They are also wonderful. Uh, what is this? Oh, look at this. Oh, my. Oh, you people are too nice. This is a little vintage uh, paperback of the Valley of Fear. The most neglected Sherlock Holmes story of them all. <laughs> you tell people that Sherlock Holmes wrote uh, two 
that, that Arthur Conan Doyle wrote two Sherlock Holmes novels, people say, yeah, he wrote The Hound of the Baskervilles. Wait a minute, that's only one. He wrote another one? Yeah, he did. It's not as successful as Hound of the Baskervilles, but then what is? Uh, but it still has lots and lots of great stuff in it. And look at this cover. That is incredible. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, Arthur Conan Doyle, The Lost World where the cover artist obviously drew his T-Rex from the model at the La Brea Tar Pits uh, a million years ago. What is this? come out in the 1950s? Uh, the book came out in 1912. When did this edition come out? 1965. <laughs> Long time from uh, the T-Rex in the movies. Uh, oh. oh, this is the cover I remember. This is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Fantastic one of the greatest Martian science fiction novels and also one of the last great science fiction, uh, star, uh, Mars science fiction novels, because there's a clear demarcation, there's a clear line for Mars-related science fiction. The line is when Earth probes finally showed us what Mars was like. Up until those pictures were being back to NASA, it was possible to dream. And after, it was not. Simple as that. After, if you wanted to write a space fantasy on Mars, you had to come up with a reason, not just a variation, not to, you, you couldn't, your, your authorly imagination couldn't just be involved with creating the gimmicks and the creatures and whatnot. You also have to come up with a way that it could be about Mars, because we now know Mars is a, a bitterly cold, frozen, dead planet, swept regularly by lethal radiation storms. It is not a lush world. It is not Barsoom. It is not anything that can have a, a sentient, bipedal, technological life. It not only does it not have that, but it couldn't have that. So you have to come up with all sorts of other ways, but this is still in that, in that green heyday. Uh, and then what's the last one? Oh my, oh my. Oh, this is this is the great Jack Dan Jack Vance. This is the faceless man. I haven't read this in forever. I don't think I've ever seen this cover. I'll have to ask Mark if he's ever seen this cover. This is an old Ace paperback. I don't think I ever have. I don't think I've ever seen this. 1971. Ah. Ah, wow. Okay. Jack Vance wrote *The Dying Earth*, uh, an absolutely uh, terrific sequence of novel of, of science fantasy novels that you really have to read. I haven't read this in forever, and the copy that I read didn't have this cover uh, at all. Wow, Man, what a treasure trove. So we have uh, the, name, the Faceless Man by Jack Vance. We have The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. We have The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. We have The Valley of Fear in this great old cover. I don't know how well any of these things are going to hold up to reading. I'm assuming that whoever, whoever you are who sent me these books, I'm assuming you're familiar with me right? We are kind of friends here. You certainly know a lot about me, every, pretty much everything there is to know. Uh, you know I'm hard on my stuff. I don't mean to be, but I am. Uh, so I don't know how long any of these paperbacks are going to survive, but they're going to be loved while they're, while they're here. Absolutely. I'm not sure that, what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure that if I do a book, a library tour a year from now, that these will still be here. This thing in particular doesn't strike me that it can take more than one reading. But oh, the reading it will get. <laughs> then we have Star Trek The New Voyages, and that's kind of the lie puts the lie to what I'm saying, because I have my copies from the 1970s, uh, and I do periodically go back to them, but it's wonderful to have another one, and some of these I, I've long since gone, gotten rid of my copies. The Price of the Phoenix, my favorite Star Trek novel, always happy to have this. This has the inset for, you could, once upon a time, you could get color cells, little cell, art cells from the animated series, you could send away for them. Uh, Hand-painted cells, I don't know if it tells you the the price, uh, $12 each, or $20 each, uh, plus posters and handling. Have to wonder what those cells are worth now. Probably thousands. Uh, then Planet of Judgment, I can't get over the shape these things are in. They still have the sheen on the cover like the day they were made. Uh, A World Without End, we have Spock Messiah, uh, the original, the first Star Trek uh novelization of James Blish, where he got a bunch of scripts from the studio and wrote them up as stories. This has a bunch of them. Uh, and this was the, it was this first one with this cover that alerted the, the company to the fact that there was money to be made here, because this was supposed to be nothing. And instead, every local store, every drugstore, my own drugstore, my, my dry goods store, sold out of it in an hour. And the more, the more copies that they got, the more reshipments that they got, the more they sold out. That gets attention. 
Uh, that's what I believe that is what originally did get attention. Uh, the, uh, what should have happened, what should have got the studio's attention right away was the fact that thousands and thousands of fans were willing to write in to urge the studio not to cancel this particular dorky star science fiction show. I don't think the studio really noticed what that meant. I think they just thought, well, you know, a, a lot of kids are upset. We don't want their parents to be upset or they won't buy TV consoles, so we'll keep the show on. I think it was only with these novelizations that suddenly somewhere, somewhere in the bowels of Paramount thought, wait a minute, <laughs> so what if we were to come out with a lot of books? Would they still sell out, all of them? <laughs> and they did. They absolutely did. Then we've got Perry's Planet, which I haven't reread in forever. We've got Star Trek Lives, which was our Bible. Oh, fantastic. Uh, we've got uh, Devil World by Gordon Eklund. Uh, Trek to Mad World. Another classic artwork on the cover there. That's not actually how phasers or photon torpedoes work, but it, we didn't know it at the time, so it doesn't matter. We have The Starless World with its original cover. Uh, and we have The Fate of the Phoenix, the sequel to The Price of the Phoenix. Uh, one of the people on that cover, again, this is a bit of a, of a risk. Yes, you have the old-style Romulan Bird of Prey on the cover, uh, but no Enterprise. No, nothing like that. Although I should point out, for those of you who may be faintly familiar with the book, that one of those two Romulans on the cover is Jim Kirk. <laughs> but isn't that a great cover? You'd never print it with this cover again. But I'm strongly tempted to reread it. So we have not only those, as if that weren't bounty enough, but then this thing. A little notebook with blank pages exactly of the size and dimension that I need for my new storage clipboard. Because my the the... Little notebook, you always need a little notebook, no matter what. No matter how many spare pieces of paper that you have, you always need a little notebook. And the little notebook that I have been using, that I was using in my old setup, doesn't fit in that storage clipboard. This will. Incredible. It's like we mind-melded. <laughs> so there you go. That is a, a holiday mail haul that's really put a smile on my face. Thank you so much, the sender of these. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I don't think there's going to be any more mail today. I bet there'll be extra tomorrow. Uh, because it, you have Sunday and Monday that, where there was no mail. But we shall see. It's, the mail for the week is going to have to work really hard to top this. So, so I'm going to go and just wallow in my new presence. <laughs> I may reread one of these, even though we're on to the next generation in Book Trek 2021. Uh, but I, either way, thank you so much, and I will be back. Thank you, Book Two.